Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've built my own supercar from an old Audi estate. Now if we're going to design and build our own DIY supercar, we usually all rush off and do the styling and the bodywork because that's the exciting stuff. However, we usually forget about the more mundane details of the car and that would be things like seat belts and airbags and they are rather important. Now there was a time when cars didn't even have seat belts, but road safety has come a long way, with the average car now having several airbags and multiple seat belts. Early seat belts were just a static strap that just went across the lap. More modern seat belts, however, have explosive devices in them that actually retract the seat belt in an accident. Seat belts continue to be a highly effective safety technology and have saved countless lives in vehicle collisions over the years. But recent advancements have resulted in more sophisticated seat belt technology that enhances occupant protection while helping reduce injury from the system itself. Pretensioners automatically retract the seat belt and secure the occupant instantly during severe deceleration, such as that caused by a frontal collision. The aim is to control occupant movement within the cabin space while ensuring that the belts are comfortable in everyday use. In a serious collision where the SRS airbag may deploy, the pretensioner activates with the airbag after a signal is received from the SRS sensor assembly. After deployment, the force limiter also comes into play as an added method of protection, reducing the load applied by the seat belt to the occupant's chest. Combined, these systems help the front airbag deploy more effectively during a frontal collision. As an added safety step for vehicles equipped with adjustable height seat belts, they should be adjusted correctly for occupants of different heights to maximize safety. Now one of the good things with YouTube is there's always someone out there who wants to test out these seat belt pretensioners and upload a video. <laughs> okay, so that's how they work. Now there is a problem. Um, these seat belts are very technical. There's a lot of engineering that goes into uh, developing them, and it's not really something you can just simply bolt into your DIY supercar. And that's something I'm going to have to address later on in the build when I do the turbo build. So I did come up with a solution um, on the prototype to get around these types of explosive seat belts. I think what we need to do is take a look at the seat belts I got from the original donor car, which was the Audi A6 C4. Now, if you're following along, and I hope you are, then you should know that I'm trying to build my own DIY supercar on a budget. Now, one of the ways to save a little bit of money is to use as many parts as I can from the original donor car, which was an Audi A6 C4. And one of the things I want to reuse are the seat belts. So what we have here, these are the seat belts from the Audi A6 C4, and these seat belts are the ones I just pulled out of the new donor car, which is an Audi A6 2.7T. If we take a quick look at the front seat belts, tell you what, I'll bring the camera in so you can have a closer look. Let's just move the rear seat belts out of the way for now. We'll take a look at one of the front seat belts. Now this was removed from an Audi A6 C4 
you can't quite make it out but there was a large cable that came out of here and it sort of looped around the gearbox and it was sort of like an early form of uh, seat belt pretension sort of thing. Um, if I can find a photo I'll pop it up on the screen. But this seat belt wasn't really going to work in my application. So these were going to go in the bin. Now if we take a look at the rear seat belt from the same car we'll find that it's just a normal retractable style belt with no explosive devices on it. Furthermore it has a nice bezel on it and that would work really well to give me an OEM look in my supercar. So the rear seat belt should work really well on the prototype. But when we take a look at these, we'll find that they are all pretentious style seat belts. They all have an explosive device on them, so in an accident it pulls the belt in. Another problem is there aren't any nice neat bezels on these things. This is the uh, plastic trim, if you like, where the seat belt came from on the original donor car. I don't think I can use this. We'll see. And then if we take a look at the rear seat belts. There we go. They came through this, this slot here. It's not really, uh, it's not really the right shape. I don't think I can use this either. So uh, mm, I really do want that OEM look, but I don't think I'm going to get it with this. So the original plan was to get rid of the front seat belts, like in the original donor car, so they're no good. And then use the rear seat belts from the Audi A6 2.7T, but these are also the explosive style seat belts. So I'm going to have to have a mess around and when the time comes I might have to do some electronics and um, build some sort of circuit because I think what's going to happen is when I start the car for the first time it's going to flag a load of errors because it can't see the seat belts. Let's take a look inside the car and we'll take a look at where the seat belt is going to be mounted. I apologise for the shaky cam but I just can't get my gimbal in this tight space. Because I'm using the rear seat belt from the donor car the idea is to use the roller part of the seat belt high up somewhere in there. Obviously the brackets haven't been built yet because I haven't finished the chassis. And then lower down is where the lower part of the belt will be bolted. Again, there is no bracket at this moment because the chassis is not finished. But uh, hopefully you get a rough idea of where the seat belt's going to go. Sorry for the shaky cam, it is a bit tight trying to film all this for you. And it's a bit dark in here as well, so I've tried using torches and stuff, but uh, the video doesn't come out very well. So the seat belt is supposed to fit on the inside and then run down inside the car and bolt to the chassis. Now you have to use captive nuts. Now that's a IVA requirement here in the UK, so I'm not sure what the regulations are where you are, wherever you are in the world watching this, your regulations might be different, but we need captive nuts to put our seat belts in. So that's seat belts, and we, we could fit racing harnesses. Now, this is really being designed as a supercar, so if it's a supercar, it's for road use and convenience. You don't really want to be putting a five point harness on every time you're going down to your posh restaurant. However, I am developing this car so it could be used as a race car, hence all the bodywork that lifts up and everything, so you can get to the mechanical parts of the car easily, you know, in a racetrack so you can get it fixed. So I had that in mind, so as I was designing this car, I did put in provisions so you can use the chassis at the back here and at the bottom 
to bolt your five point harness or whatever style harness you want into the car. So if we take a look behind the seats, just bear with me, there we go, you should see the upper chassis rail. Hopefully this comes out, it's a bit shaded in there. But you can weld in some plates, probably at the back, and then you can put your loops in through here, and then they will pass through these holes here for your multi-point harness. If we take a look under the seat, you will see a chassis rail here, where you can weld a plate for the rest of the brackets to be fitted for your multi-point harness. So this car can be set up for seat belts and a racing harness. And they both work rather well to keep you safe, as uh, this video points out. We were about seven seconds off the lead. We had won the first two stages of the morning and we were driving flat out for the win. We're going into stage 12. We're 100%. There is no easing off. But they would have never guessed what came next. Something sent them airborne and along the stage, rolling at over 90 miles per hour. It was the fastest, the biggest wreck that I've ever had in my career. So what caused this championship ending crash? You know, going, you know, roughly 90, 95 miles an hour and it tightens. I'm just sideways expecting to, you know, slide through this particularly safe looking corner. And all of a sudden it narrowed and there was just this small clump of dirt on the outside. You know, in recce, I didn't notice this narrowing part or this small clump of dirt because it was hidden by some weeds. So we hit that and it was completely unexpected. I had no idea that this thing in these little weeds was gonna send me tumbling about five times down the stage. So that's seat belts and racing harnesses. But what about these things? Airbags. are fitted to virtually every single car and van and vehicle manufactured today, apart from TVR because they never got the memo. But saying that, I don't think TVRs are being made anymore. But anyway, so airbags. Now, I was quite lucky on the first um, donor car for this car because it didn't have any airbags. So the steering wheel, no airbags, no curtain airbags, no no airbags whatsoever, so that's great. However, on the new donor car, I've got at least four airbags to contend with. I have two airbags in the seats. I have another airbag in the steering wheel from the new donor car. I also have an airbag here in the dashboard. I won't know for sure how integrated the airbag system is on this car until I pull this dash out and trace back all the wiring loom and we will be doing that in uh, future 
episodes. Plus, I also want to replace the original Audi A6 steering wheel with a Audi TT Mark II steering wheel. And I'm pretty sure those airbags are not compatible. So I'm pretty sure when I turn the key for the first time on the turbo build, I'm gonna get some airbag warning lights. Now what I do after that, I'm not too sure. Again, I might do some electronics and see if I can uh, trick the ECU into thinking that airbags have been fitted and the lights then go off. Um, if I can't do that, then what I will have to do is disable the airbag system altogether, completely delete it. But what I need to do is if there's any labeling on the dashboard or the steering wheel and it says airbag, when you go for the IVA test and it says airbag, then it has to work. So it will fail the IVA test. So all you have to do, delete the labels. So if it says airbag, hide it, cover it up so that the tester can't see it. So there's a lot to think about when you're trying to design and build your own DIY supercar. It's not all fun and games, it's not all bodywork and engines. There's a lot of boring detail stuff that you really do need to consider. So it looks like I've got a few problems in the future trying to sort out the seat belts and the airbags. Whether or not I can get these to function, um, only time will tell. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to see if I can get the airbags to work and also the retractable seat belts. Um, it's going to require some electronics and we'll see if it's in the budget. So yes, it's quite detailed when you're trying to design and build your own DIY supercar. It's a bit like playing chess. You've got to be 28 moves ahead and you've got to think of every single detail before you even start welding. Hopefully that sort of makes sense to you. So anyway, that's seat belts and airbags. Not really exciting, but very important. So I think that'll do for this episode. And all being well, hopefully I haven't gone over 20 minutes and I won't have to do any time traveling to uh, make this a two-parter. Oh yeah, talking about time traveling. What's with all these YouTubers and car reviewers coming out with the new 2020 Supra or 2020 new Corvette. Um, as far as I know, yeah, it's 2019. So if the car is for sale now, in this year, in other words, I can go down to Toyota and say, hey up, mate, can I buy that new Supra? By the way, the check's in the post. Then guess what? That makes it a 2019 Supra. So what are all you YouTubers out there doing your time traveling? You seem to have gone into the future, into the year 2020, and you're doing car reviews on, on cars that you can buy now. Anyway, just, just a rant. It's over, and so is the episode. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.